Maternal denning is probably the most critical phase in a polar bear's life cycle. Polar bear moms go into their dens early in the winter and they stay in their dens until the spring. And at that time, their cubs need to come out with them and start a life out on the sea ice. It's an extraordinarily challenging environment. And cub survival is, is quite low, even under the best of circumstances. It's pretty cold here. Svalbard is about halfway between Norway and the North Pole. Maybe like four or five quite big islands and a lot of high mountains up to 1700 meters. Those steep mountains is one reason why it's good denning habitats here. So you get snow that accumulates maybe on some plateaus and then they have hilly sides and you get snow drifts where it accumulates enough snow for bears to actually den. So Svalbard is actually a good place for polar bear denning. Polar bears den under the snow. It is absolutely impossible to watch what's happening in the den. It's one of the last frontiers of polar bear biology as far as I'm concerned. So what we're doing, we're working closely with PBI. We are put out cameras near these dens so that we can non-invasively monitor both emergence and the behavior that follows emergence from that den. You might ask, why do we go to 78 north latitude for polar bear dens? And actually, there's very few places on the planet where we know there's polar bear dens, and it's relatively easy to access those dens. The Norwegian Polar Institute has been putting out collars for decades now. So they have many females that we know where they den each and every year, which is really important because trying to find a polar bear underneath the snow is incredibly difficult. Here in Svalbard, looking at snowy mountainsides, all of them look the same. Some of them have some snow drifted, some have less, but any one of them almost, you know, could have a polar bear hiding in them. Our field team spends a lot of time analyzing each one of the radio collar locations before we head out into the field to actually place the gear. Depending on the location and distance and maybe even weather, sometimes we're using helicopters to get out to these places. Sometimes we use snowmobiles and sometimes it's just a pair of skis. First day in the field, the weather was beautiful. The sun was just over the horizon and it's coming back to Svalbard in the north right now. But the temperatures were quite harsh. We had minus 30 centigrades. We had to make sure that we bundled up for the weather outside. But we were towing sleds. So that kept us warm and running, and the entire operation was quite brief. So it was a rather uh, enjoyable adventure. The cameras that we're now using are all custom built by our team for the purpose of this project. We have a Raspberry Pi computer with a lens and screen attached. There's a battery in there, and it fits inside of an almost suitcase-sized Pelican case, which makes us so much more nimble especially for the challenging terrain here in Svalbard. On the outside of the system, we have a flexible solar panel. These are really light, really neat panels. We put those up real quick and tie everything down to the ground with some guy wires. And we hit the record button and let it go. And we're able to record HD at the den sites for the entire time the females are there. Being part of the project is uh, really opening new perspectives to me as a young researcher. So I have an idea what technology can be used to further improve our study methods. Polar bears are ring species. They live all across the Arctic. Their ecosystem actually stretches over territories of multiple countries. So they don't have borders that we humans do. Coming together in conservation research, improving our studies and cooperating is essential for understanding polar bear ecology, but also to finding good conservation solutions for the future of the species. If you go back 30, 40 years in time, Svalbard was almost always connected to the ice edge. So bears could actually walk from Svalbard up to the hunting areas and back as they wanted. But what we have seen, 
is that sea ice conditions have changed faster than anywhere else in the Arctic, more than twice as fast actually as any other place. So they lose their living areas. Some of the main denning areas, for example, that was traditionally very, very important for reproduction, are almost lost. So some places you don't find female polar bears denning anymore. I think, as most other polar researchers do, that uh, loss of habitat is by far the greatest threat. They are still doing fine, but they won't be able to make it, we think, if you don't have sea ice at all. So behavior in the denning areas is very important to try to understand more about their ecology. The cameras are wonderful. We can watch their behavior as soon as they come out of the den. And what that tells us is how big the cub is, how much they've grown. We can potentially backdate to when the cub was actually born. We can look at their body condition. Do they move vigorously? How does the mom look? All of this, which tells us a little bit about what was going on in the den. We can also follow that behavior once they're out of the den to what the environmental conditions are, both for the season before she went into the den and for the season that she's heading into. All of this, we can start to piece together that, that critical time that happens completely out of our view. Maternity denning in polar bears provides an extraordinary opportunity to actually witness the environment in which polar bears are being born and then raised. To be out there in conditions that are so harsh to us humans, but that they're a cradle for a future generation of bears, to witness that, it's a privilege and a humbling experience.